Guys, in this video, we want to focus on dengue shock syndrome. Basically, in dengue, uh, the old classification of WHO, you had three things, okay, dengue fever, uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever, and then you had dengue shock syndrome, right? So, basically, in this video, we, we want to focus on dengue shock syndrome because it can come in exam. See, when there is continued hemorrhage, okay, what will happen? Uh, there can be dengue shock syndrome. Now, what happens in shock? Shock obviously will have hypotension. This you already know, right? Shock means hypotension. So, there will be a weak pulse, rapid pulse, a weak pulse, okay? And uh, there will be cold, clammy skin, clammy, clammy skin, okay? Cold and clammy skin and there will be restlessness. So, basically, um, all the uh, symptoms of uh, uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever are present and in addition to that, there are some more symptoms. What is hemorrhagic uh, symptoms? Basically, uh, it is leaking plasma, right? Uh, these people will have uh, uh, a positive tourniquet test, right? They will be bleeding from skin, nose, mouth, gums, etc. They can be bleeding. They'll have hepatomegaly, so the liver enzymes will be elevated. There'll be thrombocytopenia, that is why, right, uh, there's so much of bleeding tendency. The platelet count has reduced, right? They will have fever, uh, same things. And raised hematocrit, because of this uh, plasma leak, right? The hematocrit, uh, the, it just seems like the uh, Paxil volume is more, right? So, uh, basically, uh, continuation of this uh, uh, capillary leak, there can be dengue shock syndrome. Here again, what will you see? Yes, raised hematocrit. Then they are talking about uh, a tachycardia, hypotension. There can be pleural effusion and ascites. Let's write this. Pleural effusion, ascites. Okay. Then this can uh, progress further. Okay. How will it progress? This will progress uh, to, this can progress to something more dangerous like metabolic acidosis, multi-organ failure, metabolic acidosis and multi-organ failure, okay. And um, there can be acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, right? There can be, uh, we already told you hemorrhage, there can be minor uh, uh, petechiae, echomyosis, epistaxis, that is from the nose bleed. There can be major bleeds like the GI bleed, the vaginal bleed, etc. Right? These are actually a feature of uh, hemorrhagic fever, dengue hemorrhagic fever, all these can occur. We will told you the bleeding is still continuing. Cerebrovascular bleeding uh, also can occur and that may complicate, okay? That can be a severe complication, complication of severe dengue. So basically in this video, we wanted to look specifically at what this dengue shock syndrome is. It is in the old classification actually. Okay, uh, so all the features of the dengue hemorrhagic fever are present. There will be shock manifestations, hypotension, rapid pulse, weak pulse, uh, cold, clammy skin, pleural effusion, aside etc. It can progress to uh, metabolic acidosis, multi-organ failure, ARDS, respiratory uh, distress syndrome. Okay. Currently, the classification that they are using is this one. Okay. Uh, this is probable dengue with warning signs. Okay. Initially, it is without warning signs, then with warning signs, and then you have severe dengue. In severe dengue, you have dengue shock syndrome. Shock comes in severe dengue. Okay. So, severe dengue will have these three, the three things. What is that? Shock. Okay. Plasma leakage will lead to shock. What is plasma? Plasma is basically, um, uh, uh, you know, when if you remove all these WBC, platelets, RBC, then you have the plasma. Plasma will still have your antibodies, isn't it? etc. Now, serum is something that you get after the blood clots. When blood clots, what is left, right? That is the serum. Okay. Okay. Now, um, now where are we? Okay. So, we are looking at uh, probable dengue and uh, uh, these are without warning signs. Then you have warning signs and then you have uh, severe dengue. Uh, probable dengue is nausea, vomiting, rash, right? Tourniquet test positive itself. They are uh, telling it could be a probable dengue, leukopenia, etc. Now, the vomiting is persistent and if they are having uh, enlargement of liver, liver enlargement becomes a warning sign for you. Then uh, again, hem uh, increasing hematocrit becomes a warning sign for you. And then there is a decrease in platelet count. These are warning signs. What are the warning signs? Uh, platelet count is decreasing, liver is enlarging, there is increase in hematocrit. That means it is including uh, plasma leak, right? Then um, there is uh, uh, a vomiting, mucosal bleed, that's it, right? Everything else sounds okay, okay. Now, uh, severe dengue, we told you that there is shock, right? There is severe hemorrhage, we told you, right? There is a, a CNS impact, uh, liver enzymes are elevated, right? Uh, heart, other organs are affected. We told you multi-organ failure can be there, right? Uh, acute respiratory distress can be there. There can be, uh, we have written that respiratory distress is written here. Fluid accumulation, there can be ascites, etc. What we told you is that there can be cerebrovascular bleeding, etc. 
something one more point should be there here pleural effusion okay that is self respiratory distress metabolic acidosis okay what else so all these can be there that will be the uh, severe dengue or uh, which will include the shock okay so there is no specific antiviral therapy the currently known uh, antivirals actually don't work against this and uh, you will have to just give fluids for these people don't give aspirin for these people okay you will give oxygen if required etc and platelet infusion uh, platelet rich plasma transfusion they can do platelet rich plasma that means plasma has platelet okay platelet rich plasma transfusion you can do if the count is less than uh, 10000 okay electrolyte balance uh, metabolic disturbances and all you will manage you should not give aspirin okay it will cause bleeding that's it guys let's take a complete recap of whatever we've seen in microbiology everything uh, basically dengue is a vector borne um, dengue is a virus it's a arbo uh, virus it's an rna virus arbo virus it comes under flaviviridae under the hemorrhagic group and uh, basically it is uh, vector borne uh, it is vector borne it is uh, transmitted to us by mosquitoes that is the aedes aegypti mosquito the dengue mosquito basically it's also called as tiger mosquito it have white bands on legs right and it is actually living in artificial water collection like aquarium etc and they bite us during the day it is called as tiger mosquito and um, basically there are uh, five serotypes uh, in india you have four and uh, dengue is very uh, bad actually it is very dangerous and uh, what else um, in india we have a lot of dengue basically there is uh, primary dengue and secondary dengue infection uh, the secondary dengue infection is uh, very dangerous uh, the serotype 1 followed by serotype 2 is very very dangerous okay and what happens in our body is uh, we make neutralizing antibodies and non neutralizing anti antibodies these non neutralizing antibodies are very very bad uh, when they then there is second infection these non neutralizing antibodies will actually help the virus okay and they will make a, make that attack us so the second attack will be very severe so you should be very careful about your second dengue attack and this is called as antibody dependent enhancement okay now uh, we have seen this classification of dengue the old classification dengue fever there will be fever we told you biphasic fever break bone fever saddle back fever etc macular pap macular papilla rashes will follow the fever there can be severe frontal headache there can be muscle joint pain there can be retro orbital pain okay then uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever what will happen um, basically here uh, there will be uh, leakage of plasma okay and there will be raised hematocrit because of that there will be hemorrhage that we are positive tourniquets these people will spontaneously bleed from uh, where and all right from skin nose mouth gums epistaxis and all they'll have this is because of the thrombocytopenia right they, they will bleed a lot right uh, then um, uh, basically then uh, this dengue hemorrhagic fever will continue continue they will be keep bleeding that will land up they will land up in dengue shock syndrome where you will see hypotension rapid pulse weak pulse uh, cold clammy skin uh, pleural effusion ascites they cannot breathe much right so uh, they'll have uh, uh, respiratory uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome they can have multi organ failure they can have acidosis etc so the, uh, that is the old classification in new classification is kind of similar only you have uh, probable dengue without the warning signs and then uh, with warning signs that is uh, with the liver enlargement with the decrease in platelet count you have uh, uh, because of mucosal bleed etc telling you that it is hemorrhagic fever right then this continues you have the severe criteria for severe dengue they'll have plasma leak leading to shock right they'll have uh, uh, pleural effusion uh, ascites fluid accumulation uh, so basically respiratory distress they can have uh, severe bleeding right their liver enzymes can be elevated the hematocrit will be uh, increased uh, itself here itself the hematocrit is increased then they'll have cns problem cerebro uh, vascular hemorrhage heart other organs affected right they'll have multi organ failure this can also lead to death very rarely though okay then what else uh, we saw so this is the saddle back fever they are showing you and then there'll be uh, uh prevention basically we told you that uh, there uh, mosquito control measures etc there are some tetravalent dengue vaccine this much you can remember if you want then um, lab diagnosis you can uh, we already told you you can detect elevated liver enzymes and uh, raised hematocrit etc platelet count will be reduced specimens um, you will collect the blood yeah uh, then you can detect the antigen that is the non structural uh, protein the ns1 you can detect um, and then you can do antibody detection especially mac elisa you can remember right uh, then uh, uh, you can also detect the virus itself using a reverse transcriptase uh, rt pcr you can also isolate this virus in mosquito cell line or mouse imagine uh, using a mosquito to grow this virus interesting right then 
then let us see uh, there is no specific antiviral therapy you will have to just give uh, fluids etc and uh, correction of electrolytes uh, etc and you have to give platelets if it is uh, going below 10,000 or something oxygen they are talking about don't give uh, aspirin etc they will bleed right that's it just supportive care and what else that's it so uh, all this about uh, dengue uh, you should be able to write uh, if they ask you this is that mosquito tiger mosquito you can see the bands